The more artistic side of YouTube is an exceedingly diverse place when it comes to the different types of content present within it. If you're looking to become a content creator as someone who is artistically inclined, you have nearly endless directions in which you can go. You could become an animator and tell stories through characters or stylized avatars. You could join the art commentary community, editing voiceovers over your art and giving input on the state of society. You could post tutorials and spread your artistic knowledge to the world. You could even make rant videos about how attractive you find kids show characters, platform degenerates who draw NSFW art based on real children, and overall cement yourself as one of YouTube's most infamous and prolific gooners. You could do that, but you probably shouldn't. But that brings us to our topic of discussion here today. The man of the hour, the one, the only, Ben the Looney. Hey folks, welcome to a new segment I like to call Artist Spotlight, where I take time to talk about the best artists the internet has to offer. And oh boy, might as well get the controversial one out of the way here. In an era where freedom of speech is taken for granted, and everyone is offended by everything, one internet artist looks at that and says, Hey, can we all just jerk off? What? Uh, Ben Louie's a pedophile huh? on Twitter who draws, uh, underage characters. Oh no! I mean, it's not as bad as Lolly, but now Ben wants to defend that, so here I am to basically explain why Ben's full of shit and a complete fucking idiot. Well, I might lose a lot of subs and friends for what I'm about to say, but I ain't in this for the popularity. I don't see a problem with Lollycon. Oh, yeah, dude. What the fuck? People feel overly compelled to try to defend these disgusting perverts who draw CP. Let's all call it what it really fucking is. And not since Jenny Wakeman have I wanted to bone a robot so badly. Did DeviantArt make this show? Ben the Looney is a man of many talents. Although his internet career began with crudely cobbled together rant videos in which he very passionately screams about children's cartoons. Fill me with pleasure, Teen Titans Go! <laughs> he has also expanded into creating his own art and animations, some of which actually depict people who are not children, making storytime videos, some of which actually have accrued a pretty decent amount of views, and even rapping. I honestly don't have anything I could say here that would be better than just playing you an excerpt from one of his songs. Boys. All I really want is boys. I want them to treat me like a toy. When I'm around them, I feel the biggest joy. I especially like the ones who eat their soy. I, I know a few of the Jormai 49ers out there can relate. But why exactly are we talking about this clearly generational talent here today? Well, recently, clips of Ben's old videos have been going somewhat viral on Twitter, with some tweets about him having obtained millions of views. Some of these tweets have even accused Ben of various things ranging from racism to being quote-unquote Epstein 2. <laughs> I mean, damn! How the hell did her character design get approved for a kid's show? Sure, the face is geometrical, and to be honest, not very appealing to the penile zone, but that body... Oh, the- Okay, I get it now. Judging from the replies to these tweets, it seems as though a massive amount of people on the internet either know who Ben is, or have at least seen excerpts from his videos in the past. So, imagine my shock when I did some research on the topic and found that Ben's YouTube channel only has about 23,000 subscribers. Now, obviously, that's nothing to scoff at, but it still seems notable that the visibility of Ben's content has extended so far beyond the reach of his channel's size. But actually, this isn't anything new. In fact, the Ben the Looney brand has for many years been plagued by controversies which often eclipsed Ben's subscriber count by orders of magnitude. Over the years, Ben has been accused of racism by the creator of a viral indie game, been sucked into the cancellation of the degenerate artist Shadman, and has even indirectly caused one of the most mainstream YouTube dramas of the last two years, the cancellation of Creepshow Art. 
The amount of ire that Ben's content has managed to draw to him over the years, along with his relatively small sub count and his absolute refusal to be deterred from content creation for years, are absolutely mind-boggling. Ben's story is one of insurmountable backlash, degenerate takes, extremely clippable moments, and an unprecedented amount of gooning, as well as, unfortunately, the mental health struggles that come with being consistently lambasted year after year by thousands upon thousands of people. So today, I'm going to be telling you all about Ben's extremely volatile internet career, as well as the controversies he's participated in and, ultimately, how not a single one of them has managed to get him fully cancelled. Whether it be because his opposition slipped up and proved that their records weren't exactly as squeaky clean as they let on, because there was a greater evil lurking behind the scenes that drew attention away from him, or simply because his audience never cared about his shortcomings in the first place. Whatever the case, it should be fun, so let's get right into the full story of Ben the Looney. According to a few of his videos in which he describes his early life, Ben grew up in Illinois as an only child in a small neighborhood, which was home to only a few kids his age. Because of this, he spent an inordinate amount of time inside watching cartoons, as well as making up stories starring his own original characters, both of which helped birth his desire to entertain people through storytelling. Ben's dream was always to be able to create his own cartoons. In high school, he was unable to accomplish this, but decided the next best thing would be to upload videos of himself discussing other people's cartoons. And thus, the Ben Rants series was born and he actually began to accrue somewhat of an audience. I should note here that the Ben who is starring in these videos is not Ben himself, but a character he created known as Ben T. Looney. This is most commonly done so that creators can fall back on the idea that all of their statements were made by their characters and not them personally, just in case anything they say happens to make people upset. This didn't really do anything to help Ben though. He first began uploading on a YouTube channel called Puffy Zilla Man 4, named for the animated series Hi Hi Puffy Amy Yumi and Godzilla, two of Ben's interests. And as you can see from its video catalog, the vast majority of uploads were either part of the Ben Rants or Ben Salutes series, with Ben Salutes being the positive counterpart to the often overly negative Ben Rants. People appreciated Ben's lack of a filter and complete fearlessness in his self-expression. And while this certainly helped attract people to his channel, as we've seen in the past, this isn't always a good thing. Case in point, after just a few years of uploading, Ben would create one of his first truly infamous pieces of content, Ben Rants, The Looney Tunes Show. The video attained an astounding 288,000 views, which is far higher than the view counts attained by any of his other Ben Rants videos even to this very day, due in large part to the negative attention which it drew to the channel. The reason this video was so hated was because, in the eyes of many, Ben didn't give the Looney Tunes show a fair chance. Rather, his takes just served to show that he was simply unable to handle any kind of change with most of his criticisms being that the show was different from the classic Looney Tunes cartoons. He also, at a certain point, completely lost it and started screaming into the mic. So, this is the first episode of the Looney Tunes show, AND IT WAS FREAKING TERRIBLE! OH MY FREAKING GOSH! This, alongside the fact that he described feeling as though he had been, uh, quote-unquote, physically by the show caused people to hate watch the video with the express purpose of laughing at Ben's absolute meltdown. Other things about Ben's channel which drew the attention of hate watchers was his tendency to self-censor by using made up cuss words like bull split and truck, as well as his habit of captioning his videos with Eva Z Fawn level statements like, seriously, to any girl out there, please love me. Ultimately, this would be the last video ever posted to the Puffy Man 4 account, with Ben taking a hiatus from the Ben Rant series and eventually being unable to log back into the account, apparently due to the permanent death of his old computer. This leads us to the creation of the Ben the Looney channel, which he is active on to this very day, although its name has since been changed to just Puffy Man. 
Over the course of his activity on the Ben the Looney channel, Ben would continually switch his stance on the Ben Rant series, first expressing a desire to kill the Ben T. Looney character and move on to making more positive videos, but then quickly caving to requests to bring the series back, or finding more interesting topics that he couldn't resist ranting about. A great example of this is when he literally animated the character rising from the grave after taking a break from the series, which is honestly the best demonstration I could think of to show his tendency to go back on his word. One of the main reasons for Ben moving away from making rant videos was that, in 2013, he announced he was currently pursuing his dreams of becoming an animator by attending college in order to improve his skills and, as such, he had less time to record videos. Furthermore, he wanted to begin focusing more on posting his own art and animations. For example, he created the Daisy and Dexter Mysteries and All Right Cartoons, which were two recurring series on his channel for a period of time. He also made forays into different fields, such as storytime animations, review-style videos, his Artist Spotlight series, and even YouTube Poops. But unfortunately for Ben, nothing ever quite stuck like Ben Rants. Beyond continually switching his stance on his most popular series, Ben also underwent a variety of other changes throughout his online career. For example, he actually underwent quite a journey in terms of personal politics. At the beginning of his online activities, many would have classified Ben as an anti-SJW due to his ardent stances on censorship and the quote-unquote ultra-PC society of today. However, over the years, Ben would become increasingly more and more progressive, noting that he became a feminist because of Captain Marvel, and the rest was history. Next thing you know, he was posting art on Twitter of his quote-unquote half Dominican, half Haitian, gay merboy character. And speaking out against things like the Alabama abortion ban, he also posted Black History Month NSFW one year, which, uh, truly, the world is healing. He also went through a weird phase at one point where he started to illustrate his avatar nude in every video, and also removed the family-friendly aspects of his channel, but he would eventually thankfully revert to having his avatar wear clothes. I don't really know what that whole era was about, but I will say that my favorite Ben the Looney video definitely came from this time period. What a daring video topic. <laughs> Regardless, that basically leaves us in the present day in terms of Ben's development over the years as a content creator. Now, while I've been giving this admittedly brief summary of Ben's online career, you might have noticed that I've skipped over the supposed myriad controversies that I claimed he's been subjected to over the years. And that's because, well, honestly, I don't even know where to start. Ben's online behavior is so contentious in this current age that, as we've already seen, just posting a clip from one of his old videos is enough to get thousands upon thousands of disgusted reactions on Twitter. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Not only has Ben actually had videos so controversial he's seen fit to remove them from the face of the internet, he's also exhibited behavior on various other sites that have always served to solidify his degeneracy in the eyes of many. But perhaps we should start at the beginning, the quintessential Ben the Looney video. The iconic, the notorious, Ben's Top 10 Hottest Animated Women. To many, this was the first time Ben expressed opinions that were truly deplorable. And, well, instead of talking at length about it, why don't I just show you a few of Ben's Top 10. Jenny Robot from My Neighbor Was a Teenage Robot. Okay, she's based on a 16-year-old girl, but she's technically not a child since she's a robot, not human. Stacy from Phineas and Ferb. Well, well, she's human and she's 15 as well, so, uh... Misty from Pokemon. Okay, she, she's 10 years old. I can't... Well, what do you guys want me to say? I heard you's a pedophile. I heard you like little boys and girls, Nick. No, it's worth stating that this video was posted extremely early into Ben's online career, and if we take his word for it, he would have been in high school around this time. Regardless, this didn't exactly help to quell the backlash against him for essentially thirsting over a character based on a 10-year-old girl. And, as you might remember from the clips I played in the intro of this video, this behavior obviously persisted into the later years of Ben's career, with him ranting about Enid from OKKOs, OK 
see my outfit as recently as 2019. Now, all of this would maybe warrant Ben getting a few callouts on Twitter and a couple people unsubscribing from him. But if this was where his controversial behavior ended, we certainly wouldn't be talking about him here today. However, Ben has never been satisfied with simply admiring underage characters from afar. To the contrary, once he began to improve his skills at art school and his confidence in his work began to balloon, Ben became a genuine menace, as he began to create and upload his own artistic works depicting some of his favorite cartoon characters. And, as you might have imagined, some of these characters were, in fact, underage. Although there are many deplorable artworks in Ben's horrific catalog, I don't think it's necessary to go through his entire career as an NSFW artist. Rather, I'll just give you a specific example that many people point to as being particularly disgusting. You see, at one point, Ben decided it would be a good idea to depict a character from the Cartoon Network show We Bear Bears in a very compromising situation. And just for context, the girl's canon age is 10 years old, and she has obviously never been depicted in a situation that is anywhere near NSFW, so that's all Ben. I could go on and describe to you all any number of artworks that ruffled people's feathers over the years, but I feel this one is enough for you all to understand where I'm going with this. People were not happy with what Ben was drawing. As you might have expected, Ben has come up with various excuses over the years for why he believes this type of art is okay. First of all, he emphasizes that, even if the change is not visually obvious in his art, whenever he draws a character in a sexual context, they have been quote-unquote aged up to be at least 18 years old, so he's not really depicting a child. He is also a die-hard proponent of the it's just a drawing and it's not hurting anyone argument that many a lolicon enthusiast has espoused in the past. He's even gone so far as to claim people are stupid for caring so much about his cartoon porn while there are real issues happening elsewhere in the world, like floods in Louisiana. I mean, he's got a point. But as Mommy Jormai always told me when I was a wee lad, two wrongs don't make a right. And I don't think too many people would disagree that drawing little girl characters naked is a wrong, at least on some level. Now, obviously, I have more to say about Ben's behavior and the reactions to it from other people online. But from this point onwards, I will be organizing the rest of the video by separating it into three distinct controversies, each one sparked by the visceral reactions prompted by some of Ben's more questionable online activities. So, having explained the broad strokes of Ben's career, as well as laying the groundwork to help you all understand how he drew so much backlash upon himself, it's time to start discussing the concrete dramas he experienced with other creators. And the first one is for something you might not have expected. As you might imagine after my description of his online activities, Ben has been accused of basically everything in the book. People have called him a creep, a lolicon, a file, an anti-SJW, a normal SJW, and everything in between. But ironically enough, one of the first things that caused Ben to get into an actual drama with another creator was when he was accused of being something completely different, racist. Which, I have to admit, I did not see coming. Now, if you're familiar with the series of tweets that inspired me to make this video, you may think this is related to the quote tweet that was made claiming that Ben used to make rant videos about hating black people. The claim was accompanied by three of the fakest screenshots I've ever seen, supposedly taken of past videos by Ben, titled Black People, which showed Ben glaring at two unsuspecting people of color, Black People 2, which showed Ben's avatar preparing to beat an unsuspecting man over the head with a baseball bat, and A Change of Heart, which supposedly depicts some serious character development on Ben's part, as he can now be seen hugging two people of color with a smile on his face. These images were accompanied by the claim, These are real, I swear to Christ, which apparently led many people in the replies to actually believe that Ben had produced these videos. Nice one, Smaggle. Now, I don't think I really need to explain why these are so obviously fake, but just for the record, these images are the result of people editing frames from one of Ben's most popular storytime animation videos 
crappy roommates to make it look like he was racist. But if Ben's racism accusations are so easily debunked, why did I dedicate a section of the video to them? Well, my dear Draw My 49ers, the true racism allegations made against Ben were actually levied in 2017, following Ben uploading a now disowned video titled, Are Classic Cartoons Racist? In this video, Ben makes a variety of contentious statements regarding old cartoons that had been coming under fire at the time for containing stereotypical depictions of people of color that many have deemed harmful. Let me play you some clips of Ben's defenses of these cartoons, and we'll see if you're able to pick up on why this video didn't exactly go over well. The only way I see these cartoons as being offensive is if you are a privileged and sheltered child who had no idea racism existed. While despite the censor's attempts to keep these cartoons hidden, some of them are in the public domain and ended up on cheap VHS tapes that you'd find in stores back in the day. I happened to have some of these tapes growing up, so I was more than familiar with these cartoons. Guess what? I didn't think anything of them. Yeah, as you might expect, implying that only privileged and sheltered people would find these depictions offensive, as well as the I watched it and I'm not racist argument, were not received very well. Soon enough, Ben found himself in some hot water, as he was declared a racist by fellow content creators. The most significant of these creators who saw fit to call Ben out was a fellow YouTuber who has a long history of accusing people of racism, Soul Brother Number 3, also known as SBN3 or Max, which is how I'll be referring to him from now on. Max was known in the past for posting various different types of videos to YouTube, ranging from comedic skits to animation dubs, and even informational videos about things like how to be a voice actor. However, nowadays he's mostly known as the creator of the wildly successful game Class of 09, a dark comedy visual novel that has attained overwhelmingly positive reviews across the internet and gone absolutely viral on social media for various clips like these. All I deserve is a deep plunge! You did this, Nicole! Oh god! Oh, shit. What was that 90s TV show? Did I do that? Max had not taken kindly to Ben's opinions on the matter of classic cartoons, and decided to thus make a YouTube video about Ben accusing him of being a quote-unquote racist pedophile. Now, while this video is unfortunately lost to time, we can still look back on various tweets made by Max and his associates about Ben from this period. These tweets include some absolute gems, such as when Ben feebly resisted the accusations of racism by mentioning that his favorite hip-hop artist is Busta Rhymes, who is not white, so I definitely see his point. These accusations marked the first time that a controversy surrounding Ben's name actually managed to spread decently far compared to his channel size. This is partially due to the fact that he was being called out by a creator whose channel was bigger than his. After all, the SBN3 channel now sits at more than 80,000 subscribers, making it far larger than Ben's. Furthermore, the callout was for something as heinous as supposedly being a racist and a pedophile, which are things that the internet does not take kindly to. However, at the end of the day, this didn't really end up going anywhere. One reason many people point to as a justification for why Max's callout didn't quite have the desired effect was that, although Max clearly opposed Ben's stance on NSFW of underage characters, and made it a point to call him a creep over it, there was much speculation circling at the time that one of Max's regular collaborators, a user named OMGTSN, was actually a creep himself. However, the accusations against OMGTSN were actually far more severe than anything that had been levied towards Ben, with multiple callout posts being made accusing him of having an inappropriate relationship with someone who was only 13 years old. Now, I'm not here to speculate on the veracity of these claims. I feel I'm not equipped to do so in the scope of this video, especially given that a lot of these posts have been lost to time. However, what I can say is that being so closely associated with someone who was being accused of these things really hurt Max's case against Ben, at least in the eyes of some internet users. Beyond that, people were starting to realize that Max was just a person who called people racist very easily, especially given his tendency to claim things like that anime is racist for being too westernized and depicting their characters as, in his opinion, too white. 
When asked if the solution to this problem would be for animators to start drawing animated characters to look more stereotypically Asian in order to satisfy him, a white man, Max decided to just delete the entire conversation. To detract from his criticisms even more, part of Max's callouts were inherently flawed, such as when he accused Ben of referring to people of color as quote-unquote the blacks in order to make him look insensitive, even though this straight up just didn't happen. As a result, Ben actually kind of cooked him in their Twitter exchange, which can't feel good. Suffice it to say, at the end of the day, Ben managed to escape this first controversy nearly unscathed. His reputation was tarnished a bit, to be sure, and some people made videos calling him out, but because a villain who people believed to be more sinister than him had been present, Ben came out appearing just a bit more sympathetic. He also disowned his video and took back his takes, as well as just moved on with his life, hopefully never to be embroiled in drama ever again. Just kidding. From here on out, the controversies only begin to skyrocket in scale, starting the literal very same year. If you've been up to date on YouTube commentary at any point within the last few years, you'll likely have heard of Shadman. Even if you don't know his full story, there's a pretty good chance you'll recognize his name, simply because of the sheer infamy that he managed to achieve through his online activities within a short period of time. Now I'm not going to give an explanation of everything that made Shadman so hated. There are plenty of videos that touch on that, including multiple by the Birdman himself. However, as it is important context for the situation at hand, I will relay to you all the low lights of Shadman's career, just to emphasize the extent to which his degeneracy was allowed to fester. From the very beginning of his online career as an artist, Shadman's work was extremely provocative, and this was done on purpose. He reveled in the negative attention he received for posting explicit lolicon art and he clearly desired to leverage this negative attention in order to catapult himself into the mainstream as a sort of misunderstood provocateur. And for a time, this actually worked, with Shadman's name becoming so well known that he even received recognition from figures like everyone's number one e-girl, Belle Delphine. And while many have obviously since denounced him for his disgusting behavior, it's worth noting just how influential he once was. But, if so many people were supposedly completely fine with Shadman creating art of characters clearly intended to be children, what caused it all to come tumbling down? Well, the first crack started to show in 2016, near the end of the presidential election. Shadman made an agreement with a random internet user that, if Donald Trump was elected president, Shad would draw Keemstar's daughter performing inappropriate activities with Trump. Keep in mind, Keemstar's daughter at this point was 7 years old. Now, Shad never ended up going through with this, instead creating a safe for work drawing of the girl, but him drawing anything based on someone that young is disturbing in and of itself. In the coming months, Shad would escalate the situation by creating more and more explicit art based on various real life children. His drawing, Lieutenant Horbitch, depicted the then-famous 11-year-old YouTuber Lieutenant Corbis doing things with a microphone. Furthermore, he created art of Emma Watson as she was when she was only 10, and Millie Bobby Brown as she was when she was only 11. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when Shad created art of the 12-year-old actress Daphne Keene, who played an important role in the movie Logan, being brutally assaulted. Furthermore, evidence was leaked proving that Shadman had based the art directly on the actress, even going so far as to call her a quote-unquote lolly in his Discord server. I'll spare you all the disgusting details of this art, but suffice it to say, at this point, even Shad's most diehard supporters were having a difficult time justifying his actions. But, some of the most valiant and honorable Shadman glazers were totally undeterred by this. Enter our man, Ben the Looney. In mid-2017, Ben made what is quite possibly the most severe error of his entire online career. He posted a video praising Shadman and platforming his art, titled Shadman, Artist Spotlight. Now keep in mind, most of the things I just discussed occurred in 2016 and 2017. As such, the fact that Ben's video was posted when it was shows that he truly didn't think these actions merited condemnation of Shadman, 
because they had already happened. But let's hear the guy out then. Oh boy. Might as well get the controversial one out of the way here. Yeah, no sh Ben. He's a very well-spoken and laid-back guy who not only defends himself well, but he manages to convince me differently regarding his work. He said some things that make so much sense that I can't even do what he says justice. I'm just gonna show ya. Yeah, we're not gonna listen to that. Overall, Ben plays clips from Shadman's YouTube videos in which he defends his heinous artworks by calling them experimentation, and then basically just goons over Shad's art for a while. Finally, he moves on to rationalizing each of his controversies. For example, he says there's nothing bad about Shadman drawing Keemstar's seven-year-old daughter, and that the haters need to quote-unquote calm their tits. Here's what he had to say about the drawing of Lieutenant Corbis. When you get down to it, it's just a girl sucking on a microphone. That just happens to look like a phallic symbol. What the he then heck? clarifies that, while he himself does not enjoy Lollicon, he will tolerate other artists for drawing it. Given that he had just tripped over himself to misconstrue the intention of what is clearly suggestive art based on a real child, I'd say that second part was pretty obvious. He also felt the need to take to the comments section in order to defend the art against people who were understandably upset. One commenter pointed out the fact that Ben had actually cropped out the more explicit parts of the drawing, and that he was downplaying the fact that the art was based on a real-life child. Ben then hops into the conversation himself to compare the art to something as innocuous as someone sucking on a hot dog, claiming that you'd have to be really sensitive to care about it. When someone brings up the presence of, uh, seminal fluids in the art, which obviously indicates suggestive themes, Ben says, There's a mug in the drawing. I see it to be whipped cream. Right. One thing in particular people noted about this video is that Ben completely skipped over the Daphne Keen controversy, which many saw as Shadman's greatest folly and which had given direct evidence that he was basing his drawings on real-life children, and he was willing to depict abhorrent things happening to them. This single video, which obviously has since been deleted, has had significant and long-lasting effects on Ben's online reputation. In nearly every situation in which he has been brought up in the future, at least for the next few years, there was a high chance that people also brought up Shadman, to his own severe detriment, Ben had managed to forever link his name with Shad's, an undesirable connection to be sure. This drama was a bit different from the Soul Brother No. 3 one because, unfortunately for Ben, there was no one to come out of the woodworks and inadvertently paint him in a better light. However, at the end of the day, it was clear to many that Ben was not the biggest villain in this scenario. Of course, platforming Shadman and presenting his degenerate artwork in a misleading way is worthy of condemnation, and it was certainly bad enough to earn Ben a spot as one of the internet's villains of the week. However, most people who cared eventually forgot this ever happened, especially as Shadman faded into irrelevance. And so, for at least a few years, there was relative peace in the world of our pervy purveyor. But what would come next was undoubtedly the biggest drama to ever touch his channel. Thus far in his online career, despite clearly being part of the artistically oriented side of YouTube, Ben had somehow managed to largely steer clear from the so-called art commentary community. This branch of YouTube generally centers around artists showing footage of them drawing while they commentate on various things, usually relating to the perceived misdeeds of their fellow creators, which is why it's sort of surprising that Ben, who has many misdeeds to speak of, managed to go for so long without being called out in one of these videos. One creator who used to be synonymous with the scene as a whole is Creepshow Art, the now notorious dark horse of the art commentary community who has since fallen from grace. And, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it was Ben's degenerate drawings that actually knocked over the first domino in a long and very convoluted line that eventually led to the unearthing of her disturbing behavior, which had been festering in the annals of the internet for years prior. And the key to understanding the link between little old Ben and this large-scale drama, which has been documented an obscene amount of times in the past two years, is another creator who used to be active in the art commentary space, Toby Majestic. 
Toby Majestic, also known as Just Toby on her YouTube channel, was, as of June of 2020, a rising star in the art commentary community. She had just started to gain a massive amount of traction, largely due to her video, The Faults of Creepshow Art. This was notably one of the first videos to be outwardly critical of Creepshow Art, who at the time was generally in the good graces of the community, and was obviously an imposing presence boasting more than half a million subscribers. In this video, Toby managed to assess Creepshow's problematic behaviors at the time in a way that many saw as level-headed and fair. And this, alongside the fact that most people agreed that Creepshow's recent actions were worthy of criticism, caused people to rally behind Toby, despite her channel being very small. Because of this wave of positive attention, the video was able to accrue an astounding 600,000 views, a number that is obviously made much more impressive by Toby's comparatively low sub count at the time it was uploaded. This positive attention also granted Toby somewhat of a positive reputation within the community, and people began to listen closely to her opinions as a commentary channel. She was even given credit by Creepshow herself, who made a video response to the situation. Although many looking back see this as merely an attempt to make her look like she could take criticism well, Creepshow dedicated a large section of her video to complimenting Toby as a creator, and voicing her respect for Toby's bravery in taking her on as such a small channel. Suffice it to say, at this point in time, Toby Majestic found herself in the good graces of the internet, but despite her coming out of the gate swinging, cracks in her level-headed facade actually began to show before much time had passed at all. At some point in mid-2020, Toby uploaded a pretty unhinged video about commentary channels and YouTube drama in general. In this video, she aligned herself with creators who had been receiving the short end of the commentary stick at the time, like Shane Dawson, Gabby Hanna, and PewDiePie, which didn't particularly go over well for her. Toby was also known for getting into Twitter slap fights with random people over various things, many of which were completely and utterly pointless. This directly went against one of her most salient criticisms of Creepshow art, which was that it was immature and pointless for Creepshow to start arguments online with anyone who happened to disagree with her on something. This showed that Toby, despite her ability to notice flaws in other content creators, was blind to the fact that she herself shared these same shortcomings. But back to the topic at hand. Don't worry Ben, I haven't forgotten you. One of the things that Toby decided to passionately argue with people about on Twitter was our very own controversial little fella, Ben the Looney. On July 26, 2020, Toby published a tweet directly accusing Ben of being a straight up pedophile because of some of his artworks that we've already discussed previously. She would later double down on this claim in several videos, such as her video from September of the same year titled, It's Still Wrong If It's Drawn. Now obviously, this was a severe claim, and had it come from a stable and credible figure in the community, this situation could have ended very badly for Ben. As it was, he did face a large amount of criticism due to the visibility that Toby drew to his channel. But ultimately, Ben ended up coming out of the situation relatively unscathed, and all he had to do was… well, nothing. See, Ben took a bit of a step back from making videos and art during this period, only posting 4 videos over the course of the next few months. And while he took this time away to let the heat die down, Toby, and the art commentary community as a whole, began to literally implode in real time. First of all, many people went to bat on Ben's behalf, accusing Toby of being a hypocrite for the things she had done in the past that seemed to contradict her current statements. For example, Toby was calling Ben a creep for drawing NSFW art of underage characters. However, she herself was responsible for creating NSFW content of both Todoroki from Boku no Hero Academia and Usagi Tsukino from Sailor Moon, both of whom were, at the very oldest, 16 years old. Furthermore, the depiction of Todoroki in particular was something a great deal of people took issue with, as Toby had drawn him obviously having been brutally abused. She even went so far as to caption it, and I quote, hit him harder. In order to defend herself, Toby claimed these artworks were not meant to be sexually charged, despite the fact that some of the hashtags added to the Todoroki artwork were hashtag hard and hashtag BDSM. Furthermore, 
Even if this wasn't intended to be sexual, many still saw it as a really gross thing to draw. Toby also claimed first that she didn't know the age of the characters, and then that she had aged the characters up in the drawings so that they were adults. However, these two claims obviously contradict each other. If you didn't know the character was a minor, how could you possibly know to draw them in a unique way to make them an adult? This is some grade A girl math. No offense to the girl in my audience. Now, obviously, none of these criticisms make it so that Toby isn't allowed to give her opinions on Ben's art. But many people claim that if Ben is a file for his drawings of underage characters, then Toby would, by her own standards, also be a pedophile. Regardless, Toby would continue her crusade against Ben through various methods that would get her into even more hot water over the coming months. First, she slid into the DMs of one of her former friends who had apparently sided with Ben and harassed them, threatening to feature them in any future videos she made calling Ben out with the express purpose of ruining their reputation. This led the former friend to post the DMs on Twitter, but unfortunately for Toby, she had sent the DMs from a separate account dedicated to her quote-unquote sex work, which she wanted to keep private. But when the messages were leaked, people were able to link the account to her. Because of this, Toby tried to spin the situation and made it seem like her ex-friend had gone out of their way to expose this information to the public, despite the fact that she had clearly instigated the conflict by threatening them in their DMs. Ultimately, Toby's erratic behavior culminated in a truly bizarre moment in a video she uploaded in August of 2020. The video was meant to be a tribute to her dog, Buddy, who had unfortunately passed away. However, near the end of the video, for some incomprehensible reason, Toby decided to once again bring up the drama she had involved herself in. Uh, ben Lewis file on Twitter, who draws uh, underage characters f***ing. Some of them he ages up like physically, um, but a lot he doesn't. Now I understand that Toby was in a rough place when she uploaded this video, and that, as she has mentioned many times, her struggles with BPD can affect her decision making. But her decision to include statements like this in a very clearly unrelated video only seemed to reinforce what people were already beginning to think about Toby, that she was starting to act very similar to the one she'd made it big off of calling out in the first place, creep show art. Prompted by this near immediate rise and fall, commentators within the community started to take note of Toby's behavior, and many began to post videos calling her out. Some of the most notable creators who did this were Kai Weiss and Omnia, two creators who would later become infamous in their own right. Overall, things turned into a giant mess, with shockwaves felt across the entire art commentary space. The amount of petty videos, DM leaks, backstabs, and L plus ratios that took place over the next few months was insane, and there's no way I'm going to cover it all. If you do want a resource on that, I highly recommend Cecil McFly's video on the topic, it's very comprehensive. Suffice it to say, Toby was not very favored during this period, and due to the vast amount of mostly valid criticism flung her way, she actually lost more than 10,000 subscribers which was a massive chunk of her audience. The internet dogpile targeting Toby got so intense that creators were being called out not only for just associating with her, but even for not outright condemning her. One creator in particular who was called out for this was Hopeless Peaches. Specifically, an absolutely horrendous commentary YouTuber named Prisonmate Luke decided to make three videos about the Toby Majestic drama, and in the third one, he inexplicably dragged Peaches into the situation, claiming she was friends with Toby, despite her expressly stating otherwise. Luke then pivoted to criticizing Peaches for supposedly suicide baiting her audience by making tweets implying she was in a rough place mentally and then not tweeting for a few days. That's it. Those were the criticisms. Despite how completely and utterly pointless this sounds to me, this would actually lead to a landslide of videos calling out Hopeless Peaches. Despite this, eventually, people started to realize that Prisonmate Luke sucks, and almost every point he made against Peaches across his various videos had no evidence backing it up. It was discovered that he was literally showing messages on screen that had absolutely nothing to do with what he was saying out loud, but his entire audience was just not paying attention, so they assumed that he was backing up his claims. It was insane. But now that it was unveiled that Prisonmate Luke was basically fabricating every point he made against Hopeless Peaches, another question was raised. 
If none of these claims were valid, why did a massive creator like Creepshow Art keep aligning herself with Luke? Did she have something against Hopeless Peaches? Well, soon enough this would be confirmed when Creepshow posted her video about Hopeless Peaches. And it was certainly one of the videos of all time. Ultimately, Creepshow also provided no evidence for her claims. She also made questionable accusations, such as that Hopeless Peaches is racist for disagreeing with people of color. Because of how far she was reaching in order to condemn Peaches, people started to read into her actions a bit more, and what they discovered would eventually lead to immense revelations, a fall from grace, and millions upon millions of views on videos covering the situation. I won't go into everything discovered about Creepshow because it's a lot. Essentially, she was a horrible, manipulative liar and even a stalker. And this is all covered in depth by people that are not me. Now I know that was a lot, so let's have a rapid fire recap of our little timeline here. 1. Ben draws gross no-no art. 2. Toby Majestic calls out Ben for his gross no-no art. 3. People look into Toby Majestic, and she also made gross no-no art, and is also just basically a big hypocrite and kind of a weirdo. 4. Anybody associated with Toby Majestic, even if they've expressly stated they are not, is called out, including Hopeless Peaches. 5. Prison Mate Luke and Creepshow Art really fixate on Hopeless Peaches. 6. People start to look into Creepshow Art, wondering why she fixates so much on Hopeless Peaches. And 7. People discover some no-no things about Creepshow Art and everything comes falling down. <sighs> I know I've been talking about this guy for way too long, but we should get to his response to this whole situation. In response to the original Toby Majestic drama, Ben had actually made a pretty well-received video. In it, he describes all the ways he planned on rectifying the criticisms levied against him. First, he created a separate Twitter to post his NSFW art so there's no chance anyone's eyeballs would be directly assaulted by NSFW if they clicked on his main account from his YouTube channel. Next, he took back everything he said about Shadman and deleted his video about him. Finally, he claimed he would do a better job of aging up the subjects of his drawings to make it clear he's not trying to create art of minors. Honestly, I can't tell if my brain has been completely rotted because of all the horrible takes I was forced to sit through while researching the Toby drama, but I actually really like this response from Ben. I don't think it's redeemed him for the gross things he's said, done, and drawn over the years, but it's certainly a good starting place. Ultimately, this controversy served as yet another example of Ben's unbelievable tenacity as a creator. In the face of immense backlash, time and time again, he has persisted in producing content, and more often than not, his opposition finds some way to take itself out. Because of this, Ben's actually managed to outlast most of the major players in these dramas, at least on YouTube. Max rarely uploads to his channel anymore, choosing to focus more on other projects like Class of 09. Shadman's career has long since been dead and gone, and he was allegedly arrested on assault charges in LA two years ago. And Toby, as well as literally almost the entire art commentary space, completely fell apart over the course of just a few months. And although Ben himself isn't the most active on YouTube anymore, it's still insane that he's more active than any of these other people. Regardless, that caps off what is essentially the last major controversy that Ben has been a part of. Unless you want to count being the subject of a semi-viral Twitter thread as a major controversy, which I do not. So let's finally get into my conclusion. Overall, I wanted to talk about Ben because of the crazy amount of times he's been called out but how he's managed to escape mostly unscathed each time and because without even knowing it, he's been involved in some of the largest dramas to ever touch this website. I want to be clear that I do not in any way condone Ben's statements on Lolly, or basically anything for that matter. He's not a guy I find myself agreeing with much, to be honest. But as always, I wanted to end this video on a bit of a more positive note, because I can only be a hater for so long. And so, I want to point out the fact that Ben is not an inherently unsympathetic figure. As I mentioned near the beginning of this video, Ben claims that he was raised almost entirely inside, watching cartoons and movies. This paints him in a very similar light to someone the Jormai 49ers will be familiar with, Yandere Dev. However, unlike Alex, Ben was never ousted for having inappropriate interactions with minors. 
Rather, he just makes degenerate art and degenerate statements, uh, but he's always stuck generally to the realm of the imaginary, which, you know, it's still disgusting, but baby steps, I guess. Furthermore, another thing which differentiates him from our infamous game developer is that Ben started uploading videos when he was in high school. With the immense amount of backlash he faced even within the first few years of his channel's existence, which would only increase in later years, it's not hard to see how Ben could have been adversely affected by his interactions on the internet, especially given his relatively young age compared to his contemporaries. Again, I'm not trying to defend Ben's ridiculous statements, horrendous art decisions, or goon-oriented lifestyle. But I want the Jor my 49ers to remember that behind every account is a real person. And my disclaimer is there for a reason. It's not just to cover my ass. I genuinely don't want harassment to come to any of the subjects of my videos. Especially not to Ben, who has expressed recently that he is in a dark place both creatively and emotionally due to being stretched very thin by his job. To Ben, as well as to everyone involved in these absolutely wacky controversies, I hope you're able to reach a better place in life, and discover what makes you truly happy and fulfilled. I also hope you'll stop drawing art of minors, even if they're fictional characters, because that's gross and it needs to go, but I digress. I think the saddest part of this whole situation is that Ben truly had potential as a storytime animator. Out of his channel's top 5 most viewed videos of all time, 4 are storytime animations, and they've all accumulated very respectable view counts in the hundreds of thousands. Ben could have made a name for himself in the scene, but instead, he just had to rant about how sexually appealing the girls in kids' cartoons are. And now look where we are. But what do I know? I've just been your host, DrawMy49. What a ride, and good night.